Tonight on Y News. Former Kalawan Laguna Mayor Antonio Sanchez, who was sentenced to seven terms of reclusion perpetua in 1995, will likely be released soon from the new Bilibid prisons. Abataan Party List Representative Sara Elago calls to junk trumped-up charges filed against them for allegedly recruiting minors into leftist groups. The Agriculture Department says pigs will, pigs will could be the source of the undetermined hog disease that has been killing many pigs in several areas in Luzon. And President Rodrigo Duterte tells his fellow government workers to be like the late former Senator Benigno Ninoy Aquino as the nation marks his 36th death anniversary. Good evening. Convicted former Kalawan Laguna Mayor Antonio Sanchez and over 10,000 prisoners may have their jail time cut soon. Neil Maribuhok explains why. On June 25, 2019, the Supreme Court declared that all prisoners, regardless if they're serving their sentence, may qualify for the reduction of sentence even before October 10, 2013, the effectivity of the law. More than 10,000 inmates may benefit from the amended revised penal code. And one of them is convicted former Kalawan Laguna Mayor Antonio Sanchez, says the Justice Department. <laughs> Sanchez is convicted for murder and rape of two UP Los Baños students in 1993. Under Republic Act No. 10592, inmates can earn time deductions for good behavior. He or she is also allowed for deduction of 15 days for each month of study, teaching, or mentoring service time rendered. Um, Meanwhile, Malacanang is hands off on the matter. Hindi na kailangan ng kahit na sinong tao mag-intervene o lumakan sa release kasi merong patas na na-benefit yung si Mr. Sanchez sa kayo. Labing isang libo pa. Presidential Spokesperson and Chief Presidential Legal Counsel Secretary Salvador Panelo also feels happy about the positive development. Secretary Panelo is Sanchez's former counsel. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Scientists found extreme concentrations of microplastics in the Sargasso Sea, which poses a threat to different maritime, maritime species, marine species. Pat Dumaraos tells us why. Scientists studying the scale and impact of plastic pollution on wildlife in the Sargasso Sea have found extreme concentrations of microplastic, which they worry will threaten sea turtles and other marine species that live there. The Sargasso Sea is known for its huge accumulations of sargassum seaweed, which provide shelter and food for a wealth of spawning sea life, including sea turtles. It acts as an important incubator for baby sea turtles. But the weed also gathers microplastic particles, which are then eaten by the wildlife and enter the food chain. But what we're worried about is that these habitats are not only valuable for their development, but plastics could also be threatening that development. And uh, that could be done in a couple ways, um, I mean, through direct ing ingestion or through entanglement. Nearly all seven species of sea turtle are classed as endangered by Global Conservation Group World Wildlife Fund with habit destruction and poaching among reasons for their decline. Marine ecologists from the Archie Carr Center for Sea Turtle Research took water temperature measurements inside clumps of seaweeds. They want to know how the sargassum benefits turtles before climate change alters the area for good. Our idea here is that sargassum 
can possibly offer a thermal advantage, which could help younger sea turtles grow up faster. Um, so that's really, that's what we're testing out here. We're going to compare the temperature in open water versus in a sargassum mat, where turtles are known to live for the first at least five to 10 years of their lives. The Sargasso is a whirlpool-like circular ocean current that draws in and traps debris from Africa, Europe, and North America. Any plastic pollution sucked in is continuously broken by the churning current until it becomes microplastic. Greenpeace is calling on the United Nations to protect 30% of the world's oceans by 2030. The environmental campaign groups say a strong global treaty is needed to protect the oceans from major threats including climate change, overfishing, plastic pollution, deep sea mining and oil drilling. The UN will meet in New York later this month to prepare the ground for a final meeting to agree a global ocean treaty next year. Kat Dumaraos, UNTV News and Rescue. Welcome back to Wine News. We pick up to where Angelo Castro III left off. I'm Alex Baltazar and here are the headlines. The Agriculture Department says pig's will could be the source of the undetermined hog disease that has been killing many pigs in several areas in Luzon. More than 500 illegal aliens in the country nabbed since January according to the Bureau of Immigration. Setor Pia Cayetano wants flavored alcoholic drinks in Tetra packs out from stores. Georgian ambassador to the Philippines, Irakli Asashvili, pays courtesy call to Manila City Mayor Isko Moreno. And President Rodrigo Duterte tells his fellow government workers to be like the late former Senator Benigno Ninoy Aquino Jr. as the nation marks his 36th death anniversary. Good evening. The Agriculture Department still refuses to name the areas where hogs died due to still undetermined cause. Pigs will may be the source of the disease. The DA says. Ray Pelayo tells us why. The result of the confirmatory test done in Europe on the samples of hogs that had recently died may take two weeks to three months. Now, the Agriculture Department is implementing a major disease protocol in areas where irregular pig deaths were recorded. Based on the protocol, all hogs had been culled within a 1km radius. Within a 7km radius, the entry and exit of hogs is limited, while racers are compelled to report pig deaths within a 10 km radius. The DA meanwhile assures the safety of pork available in local markets. We assure the public that the, the meat in the market today is safe because it's sourced from, from areas na not infected. Rhea said that pig swill is one of the possible sources of the disease. Swill is cheaper so racers opt to buy it, he adds. The Agriculture Department will include the government's assistance to affected hog racers in their third bulletin. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Makati City. Senator Pia Cayetano wants flavored alcoholic drinks or alco pops in Tetra Packs out from stores. The Lady Solon fears such beverages would easily be accessed and abused by minors. Grace Cossin details why. Pia Cayetano was alarmed after finding out that there are alcopops sold in local stores. The sample the lawmaker showed has 7% alcohol content. Senator Cayetano said this was displayed in a store together with ordinary juice drinks. This makes it noticeable that such beverages contain alcohol. The senator once again calls on manufacturers to pull out the product from stores and change the alcopops packaging. Oh, lahat naman tayo kahit pa pan, Oh, nasama dyan si Alco Pops, makulay. Yung kahera, you think may time siya, nakita niya makulay yun, you think nadidistinguish siya na, ay, Alco Pops to, sandali, sandali. Ilang taong ka na ba? Philippine Amalgamated Supermarket Association President Stephen Kua said he doesn't sell Alco Pops in dog packs in his stores, but he has no power to instruct their members to pull out the products because no law is violated. Free enterprise tayo, eh, diba? We carry what the market wants, as, again, as long as it's not illegal or illicit. Senator Cayetano has earlier raised the issue during the Senate Committee on Ways and Means hearing on the proposed imposition of higher taxes on liquor and other tobacco products. 
The committee has invited Alcopop's manufacturers to attend the next hearing to give them a chance to explain their side on the issue. Grace Kassin, UNTV News & Rescue, Manila. President Rodrigo Duterte reiterates his plan to talk about the arbitral ruling that favors the Philippines over China in the disputed territories in the West Philippine Sea when he visits China August 28 to September 3. He will meet Chinese President Xi Jinping and talk about the Hague ruling, the Code of Conduct, as well as the proposed joint oil exploration in the West Philippine Sea. The president made the statement when he led the inauguration of the 7.5 megawatt peak solar power project in the municipality of Ujong and Tablas Island in Ramblon tonight. This is the first public engagement of the president after being out of the public eye for more than a week. So, whether you like it or not, will it make you happy or not, angry or otherwise, I'm sorry. But we have to talk the arbitrary ruling, then what we get. If there is a start in the exploration and in the extraction of uh, whatever worth there is in the bowels of the earth, uh, the proposal of 6040 in our favor is, would be a good start. I hope that it would graduate to something like towards how do we solve the arbitral ruling peacefully. The Armed Forces of the Philippines, Western Mindanao Command says the Filipino fishermen in Tawi-Tawi province have nothing to worry about the recent passage of Chinese vessels in the Cebuto Strait. Dante Amento will tell us why. It is not hostile. This is the explanation the AFP Westmancom gave on the passage of Chinese warships in Tawi-Tawi waters. They assured that fisher folks there must not be alarmed. Hindi naman siya hostile itong pagdaan ng mga Chinese vessels na ito. Uh, kung kaya't wala, dapat tayong uh, ikalarma. Do yung ating uh, ginawa is uh, we, we submitted yung ating report uh, on that incident ano, uh, to high headquarters for appropriate actions. Based on the AFP's monitoring, there were five Chinese vessels that passed through the Cebu Passage from July 2 until August 4 this year. The Philippines, Indonesia, and Malaysia are working together to secure common borders through the Trilateral Maritime Patrol Agreement, which began in 2017. The Philippine Navy and the Philippine Coast Guard, for their part, conduct regular sea patrols after incidents of kidnapping, sea jacking, and other illegal activities in the southern part of the country. To include itong uh, security postures natin against uh, kidnapping na tumatawid yan sa uh, Tawitawi, Hulu, and Basila. Ano, kung kaya't pas uh, talagang pinalakas natin yung ating uh, security posture ano, on the uh, maritime domain natin. Dante Amento, UNTV News and Rescue, Zamboanga City. More than 500 foreign nationals who illegally entered the country have been arrested by Philippine authorities since January. Aiko Miguel reports why. Based on the Bureau of Immigration's guidelines, a tourist visa is valid for only one to six months in the Philippines, while a working visa is valid for one to three years. The Bureau has a system to monitor foreign nationals who are overstaying or working illegally in the country. Meron po tayo parang pinatawag na branches or mga support offices kung saan po ito po yung may uh, mga opisinang to ang in charge of monitoring the aliens that are uh, located in their specific jurisdiction. Despite this, some foreigners are able to enter the country who are later discovered to be working illegally as they fail to show appropriate working visa. The BI reports that over 500 illegal aliens were arrested from January to July this year. About aliens po na either overstaying na or undesirable or nagtatrabaho po ng walang permiso, agad-agad po itong pinapaisyon, iniisyohan po ito ng commissioner ng uh, mission order para po maaresto itong mga illegal aliens na to and ating mapadeport. The BI spokesman explains how these illegal aliens are able to enter the country's borders. Ang nakikita po nating problema is yung mga pumupunta dito, yung mga writers na tinatawag, sumasabay po dito sa trends na ito para magtrabaho dito ng walang tamang permit. The BI as they strengthen their efforts to curb illegal entry of foreigners vow to sustain the monitoring of Chinese nationals who work in Philippine offshore gaming operations or POGO. 
Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. The top two officials of the country join the Filipino people as the nation commemorates the death of Ninoy Aquino today. They send out messages of the importance of the former senator's contributions to this society. Rosalie Cos details why. In his official message for the holiday, President Duterte hopes that Ninoy's remarkable life as a public servant will move his fellow government workers to serve with honor, integrity, and purpose, as well as inspire youth to be of service to the country and fellow men. The chief executive also appeals to the Filipinos to let Ninoy's example guide us as everyone strives to uplift and protect the most vulnerable in our society and to ensure that all Filipinos will enjoy the blessings of freedom Freedom, democracy and the rule of law. The chief executive acknowledges the important role of the former senator in restoring our democratic institutions more than three decades ago. President Duterte also says that Nino's sacrifice altered the course of the nation's history and still continues to ignite the spirit of heroism among Filipino people. However, the president says there's still a lot that needs to be done if we are to completely eradicate poverty, corruption and injustice that had plagued the nation even during Ninoy's time. Meanwhile, Vice President Lenny Robredo points out that certain quarters these days dismiss the significance of Ninoy's sacrifice and question the validity of EDSA People Power Revolution as well as push a revised version of history. In the end, Vice President Robredo encourages Filipinos to express gratitude for the sacrifices of Dinoy and those like him, both the nameless and the heralded. She also calls for our persistent commitment to defend the freedom they won back for us. Republic Act No. 9256 declares August 21 of every year as Ninoy Aquino Day, a special non-working holiday to commemorate the death of Ninoy. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanang. Tropical cyclone Ineng intensifies as it moves in the Philippine area of responsibility. Bagasa located the storm at 1,135 kilometers east of Infanta Quezon, packed with maximum sustained winds of 65 kilometers per hour and gustiness of 80 kilometers per hour. Bagasa said the center of Ineng is less likely to hit the country, but the outer cloud band is now affecting Bicol region. Eastern Visayas and Quezon Province. Scattered rain showers and thunderstorms will also be experienced in the area. The same weather condition will also affect Batanes, Babuyan Group of Islands, Mimaropa, and the rest of Visayas due to the effect of the southwest monsoon. Isolated thunderstorms will prevail over Metro Manila and the rest of the country. Today is the Ninoy Aquino Day in the Philippines. Let's find out if some Filipinos know Benigno Aquino Jr. or have any knowledge on his contributions to the country, as Mon Hoxon reports. We see his image on a 500 peso bill, together with his late wife, former President Cory Aquino. After more than 30 years, since his passing, Benigno Simeon Ninoy Aquino Jr. remains a national figure. We've asked some Filipinos if they are familiar with the former Tarlac governor and former Philippine senator. This is uh, ex-senator ex Ninoy Aquino, this Tita Cory Aquino. He was shot during 1970, during martial law, sa Tarmac airport. That's why we have Echa Revolution. Then after Marcos, President Marcos, was driving away from Philippines, Tita Cori substitute becomes the president of the Philippines. That's how revolution is and that how how we celebrate today. Si Benigno Aquino po, tapos si Corazon Aquino. Siya po ay binaril dun sa pagbaba niya po ng aeroplano na may kasama po siyang mga, mga security po na upang magbantay pa sa kanya. Dahil po sa mga Ako sang binigay po sa kanya dahil sa, sa administrasyong Marcos. Si Corazon Aquino ay uh, ang asawa ni Benigno Aquino. Ito binarel. Then ito, si Ma'am Cory. Ano siya? Nagkasakit. Ba? Ang alam ko kasi mayaman sila eh. Sa kanila yung asyenda sa Tarlac. 
but surprisingly, there are some Filipinos even at their old age have limited knowledge about the Aquinos. Si Kuri. Sina? Si Kuri. Si Sino pa nga itong isa? Cardinoinoy. Ano ba yung kinamatay ni... Hindi ko po alam. Ano mo alam? Kung paano siya namatay? Mm -hmm. Eh si Cory, alam mo. Kung paano namatay? Hindi ko rin alam. Nasa ka ba nung people power? Nasa ka nun? Nung nagkakagulo sa EDSA? Wala kami sa probinsya. Hindi, hindi ko alam. Dahil di mo alam, kukunin ko na yung payman. <laughs> Ninoy Aquino, a Filipino who for many is great, has left a mark in Philippine history. As the Filipinos commemorate his death every August 21st, this year being the 36th, let us not forget the life he had lived. Mon Hokson, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. And finally, to complete the most significant news for this day, Why News continues, here are the top stories. Kabataan Party List Representative Sara Elago calls to junk trumped-up charges against her and other youth dealer leaders over the alleged recruitment of minors by leftist groups. Meanwhile, Malacanang defends the need for a huge budget for the government's anti-insurgency program. Joa Nano tells us why. The Department of Justice has issued a subpoena to summon Kabataan Party List Representative Sara Elago, Bayan Munich Chairperson Neri Colmenares, Akbayan Representative Tom Villarin, and some Anakbayan officials. The complaint has been filed by Lucena Relisa Santos and the PNP Criminal Investigation and Detection Group over the alleged kidnapping of 18-year-old high school student Alicia Lucena, who is said to have been recruited by Anakbayan, a youth group. For Elago, the complaint must be junk since it's baseless and absurd. While Bayan Muna Chairperson Neri Colmenares confirms, he will comply with the DOJ's order. Walang problema ang pumunta dyan kahit harassment suit dyan as a lawyer, I will face it. Uh, definitely. Uh, lalo na walang katuturan niyang kaso na yan. Alicia Lucenas earlier denied she was kidnapped by anak bayan. Meanwhile, Malacanang defends the 622 billion peso budget allocated for the crackdown of New People's Army in the proposed 2020 national budget. Secretary Carlo Nograles explains a budget is necessary also for development projects in communities afflicted by communist rebels as well as for localized peace negotiations. Uh, Siyempre, localized peace talks sa tayo. At dahil localized peace talks, yung pag-uusap ng mga surrenderies. So when the surrenderies sur uh, come, come in, come back to the fold, may eclip tayo uh, na ginagastos yeah. for that. And eclip, kasama sa eclip, yung livelihood component. Spanded and uh, all of these social benefits and social programs na binibigay natin sa kanila to entice them to come back to the folds of uh, government. So all of that entails cost. So lahat yan multiplied by how many regions pa tayo? Joan Anu, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. A foreign ambassador who paid courtesy called to Manila City Mayor Isco Moreno today emphasizes the importance of curbing corruption among police ranks towards economic growth. Arlene Delgado tells us why. Georgian Ambassador to the Philippines, Heraclia Sashvili, arrived this morning at the Manila City Hall to pay courtesy call to Mayor Isco Moreno. The Georgian ambassador shared his country's police reform efforts by curbing corruption, cleansing the ranks, and putting up police offices made of glass so the public can see all directions. You cannot uh, have reforms and you cannot have economical developments when you have criminals who are interrupting the normal people's lives. So. He added the Georgian government also focuses on improving their public service, which, according to the ambassador, has led to more investments. Mayor Moreno, on the other hand, shared the efforts to eradicate red tape and government transactions, as well as his micromanagement to improve the city. The two officials also discussed issues on traffic and waste disposal. The ambassador invited Mayor Moreno to visit his country. He shared with me some plans regarding the reforms he is going to carry out. It's very promising and I wish him luck. I'm welcoming every, every Georgian people from Georgia. Uh, uh, if they will visit the city, 
They are always welcome to Manila City Hall. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Meanwhile, Italian Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte on Tuesday announced his imminent resignation following a harsh political dispute within his cabinet coalition. Conte's resignation would put an end to a 14-month-long government experience between the far-right Anti-Immigrant League Party and Anti-Establishment Five Star Movement. The crisis was triggered earlier this month by the League's leader, and Interior Minister Matteo Salvini, who submitted a no-confidence motion in Parliament against the Prime Minister. U.S. President Donald Trump said on Tuesday he was postponing his scheduled meeting with Danish Prime Minister Mette Frederiksen in two weeks because of her lack of interest in his offer to purchase Greenland. A White House official said Trump had dropped the September 2-3 stop in Denmark. A NATO ally, Trump, had been due to discuss the Arctic in meetings in Copenhagen with Frederiksen, who took office in June, and Prime Minister Kim Kielsen of Greenland. He is due to visit Poland on August 31st. Frederiksen said on Sunday the idea of selling Greenland to the United States was absurd after an economic advisor to Trump confirmed U.S. interest in buying the world's largest island. Migrants from Spanish charity ship Open Arms finally disembark in the Italian island of Lampedusa on Tuesday evening after nearly three weeks at sea. Earlier in the day, an Italian prosecutor ordered the seizure of the ship and the evacuation of the migrants on board, ending a prolonged standoff between the Spanish charity and the government in Rome. The open arm ship, run by a Spanish charity of the same name, has been stranded at sea for the past 19 days, with the charity saying that the migrants are distressed and urgently need to find shelter. Italy has taken a tough line on migrant entry, saying it has borne too much responsibility for handling African migration to Europe. Interior Minister Matteo Salvini says the charity-run ships have become taxis for people smugglers. The wind drop in the Canary Islands, allowing firefighters to make progress against Spain's biggest wildfire so far this year. Meanwhile, wildfires raging in the Amazon rainforest have hit a record number this year. Jovic Burmas explains why. In Brazil, Brazil's Amazon rainforest has seen a record number of fires this year, according to new data from the country's space research agency. The National Institute for Space Research said its satellite data showed an 83% increase on the same period in 2018. It comes weeks after President Jair Bolsonaro fired the head of the agency amid rows over its deforestation data. Smoke from the fires caused a blackout in the city of Sao Paulo on Monday. The daytime blackout, which lasted for about an hour, came after strong winds brought in smoke from forest fires burning in the states of Amazonas and Rondonia, more than 2,700 kilometers away. Conservationists have blamed Bolsonaro, saying he has encouraged luggers and farmers to clear the land. In Spain, Despite weather conditions favoring efforts to control the raging wildfire in Spain's Gran Canaria Island, the fire remains active. The blaze, which began on Saturday near the town of Tejeda, was advancing on several fronts, propelled by a combination of high temperatures, strong winds, and low humidity. President of the Canary Islands, Angel Victor Torres, said that the fire had spread much slower than it would have if weather conditions had been windy as they were on Monday. Around 10,000 people in total have been evacuated, but the president said certain residents in now safe areas would be able to return to their homes in the afternoon. And in the USA, dozens of air mattresses cartwheeled their way across a park in the U.S. city of Denver on Saturday after strong winds whipped through the neighborhood. Eyewitness Rob Maines, who filmed the bizarre spectacle, described the incident as the Great Mattress Migration of 2019. According to local reports, the mattresses had been set out for an event called the Bed Cinema later that day. 
where cinema goers could reserve an air mattress to watch the film in the open air. Jovic Burmats, UNTV News and Rescue. It's a common refrain, driverless cars are the next big thing. Well, in Moscow, they have already arrived. A Russian company has been trialing the technology and hopes to have up to 1,000 vehicles in operation within the next few years. Mon Hoxon details why. Russian tech giant Yandex hopes to start testing more than 100 of its self-driving cars on roads by the end of this year. It already has a fleet of 90 cars, 35 of which are being tested on Moscow's roads. In this matter, we are outdriving others. For instance, in the Innopolis Innovation Center next to Kazan, a driverless Yandex taxi has already been operating for a year. In this format, there is no one at the wheel. There is an operator still inside the car on the passenger seat, but you can call a taxi, it will arrive. There will be no one at the wheel, it will drive by itself. Yandex began working on driverless technology in 2016 and tested its first cars in 2017. Holishuk said the company was looking into the possibility of carrying out tests in the United States where he said legislation was the most progressive. I estimate some five to seven years time before some first percent of the taxi rides are carried out by robots and we stop reacting to this as if it's some kind of a miracle. It will become ordinary. They will not be numerous, but they will have been introduced in the city. In the simpler conditions, this will appear much sooner. For instance, they already exist in Innopolis. Research published by HSBC Bank in January said that Yandex's autonomous driving software put it on a par with global leaders in the technology and that it was catching up with Google's Waymo. Yandex has not disclosed how much it has invested in self-driving technology, but Paul Shook said a single car costs 6.5 million rubles or $98,000. He said the price had fallen from the 9.5 million it had cost to build the company's first prototype. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue. A firefighter in Bangkok, Thailand is called out as many as 10 times a day not to deal with fire but with snakes that have slithered into homes. Vinya Armilio explains why. In the dead of night, Thai firefighter Pinyo Puk Pinyo skillfully approaches a python coiled around the rafters of a home in Bangkok and quickly grabs its head with his bare hands. I need to remain steady and calm. This snake is very strong. If I make a wrong move, I could get bitten because it has very sharp fangs. I don't recommend you doing this because it's dangerous. The family living in the house watch in awe from afar, recording the spectacle on a smartphone. I am really impressed with his skills, how he can catch a snake that long with his bare hands and fit it in such a small bag. Many homes in the Thai capital are visited by snakes, which live in underground canals or enter gardens or toilets during the rainy season in search of food. In 2018, disaster prevention officials said they received 37,000 reports of home intrusions by snakes around Bangkok. Bangkok firefighters spend more time catching snakes than putting out fires, with more than 100 snake encroachments a day in recent months, compared to just one or two fires. Data from the city's fire and rescue department show. The fire station in northeast Bangkok, where he works, get more than 3,000 telephone calls a year seeking help with snakes. Book Pino says he traps up to 800 snakes each year, about 70% non-venomous pythons, while the rest are cobras and other venomous snakes. 
the venomous reptiles are taken to a specialist institute that extracts snake venom to make an antidote. The non-venomous reptiles are mostly returned to the wild in jungles far away from the metropolitan areas. In his free time at the fire station, Bugpino cares for the captured snakes, taking king cobras out of their cages to feed them. He also runs classes on how to handle snakes safely. Nina Armilio, UNTV News and Rescue. The so-called militarization in university campuses has been the talk of the town. A group of professors say they are willing to cooperate with authorities, but they are just after the safety of their students. While the Interior Department explains activism is okay, but not armed rebellion. Vincent Arboleda will tell us why. The Department of the Interior and local government clarify they are not hindering activism among students. What the government wants to stop is the recruitment activities of the CPP, NPA, and DF in university campuses for their armed conflict. But a group of educators from several universities in Metro Manila are not in favor of police and military presence in their campuses. They assure, however, they are monitoring the groups and organizations within their universities. University of the Philippines Diliman Chancellor Mike Tan also gave his assurance they are ready to cooperate with the AFP and the PNP in a proper and harmless manner. Tan said the PNP and AFP may even conduct lectures and forums in universities, particularly in UP. Mahanap lang sila ng co-sponsor sa isang organisasyon ng UP. Still, the authorities should not do this in a manner such as militarization that armed soldiers and police will enter the campuses. According to Dr. Robert Ampil of the University of Santo Tomas, there are some students who are activists, but... Wala pong NPA dito sa UP. The group explains the students' expressions are a product of awareness of events and is part of their freedom of speech. They are just using the label of communism as a convenient excuse to quell whatever critical thinking uh, people may have here in this university as, as, as well as in other universities. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Philippine National Police stresses the proposed amendments to the Human Security Act will address issues on criminality and terrorism in the country. The PNP wants to extend the wiretapping period of suspected criminals and the allowable detention period. April Senadosa tells us why. These laws are meant to address criminality, terrorism. Hindi po ito to address political rivalry na naman, no? This is the statement made by PNP Chief Police General Oscar Albayalde on the proposed amendments to Republic Act 9372 or Human Security Act of 2007. He stands firm there is no political color in the law. General Albayalde advises the public to look into the amendments with positive light. The PNP supports the expanded wiretapping law to determine the connections of a certain terrorist as well as their supply of financial assistance. The police propose to extend the wiretapping period of suspected criminals from 30 days to 90 days as well as allowable detention period from 36 hours to 60 days. Medyo baka kulang yung 30 days niyan. Malacanang, the Department of National Defense and the Department of Interior and Local Government have already backed the said proposed amendments. April Senadoza, UNTV News and Rescue, Camp Krame. And those are the reasons behind the news this August 21st, 2019. On behalf of Alex Baltazar and Angelo Castro III, I am William Theo, and before we close, we will recap with today's significant sound bites. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. Good evening. They are just using the label of communism as a convenient excuse to quell whatever critical thinking uh, people may have here in this university as, as, as well as in other universities. 
We assure the public that the, the meat in the market today is safe because it's sourced from, from areas na not infected. Oh, lahat naman tayo, kahit pa paano, nag-grocery. Oh, nasama dyan si Alco Pops, makulay. Yung kahera, can you think, nadidistinguish na, ay, Alco Pops to, sandali, sandali. Ilang taong ka na ba? Ang nakikita po nating problema is yung mga pumupunta dito, yung mga riders na tinatawag, sumasabay po dito sa trends na ito para magtrabaho dito na walang tamang permit.